Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I want to do a short review on a pen from Moon Man. Now it is this pen, well this is the box it comes in, and it's the Moon, Ma Moon Man uh, Q1. Um, very nice packaging, really solid, you know, sort of plush cardboard box. And then you take the cap off, the lid off, and uh, you get the pen and a little eyedropper there to fill it because this is an eyedropper only pen. Um, now, this is an interesting pen. Just sitting there in the phone, I'll just take it out. It's a pocket pen. It's got a very unique size and unique dimensions and all of those sorts of things, sorts of things. But uh, the question has to be asked, how unique is it? As we all know, Moon Man have done some really nice original pens over the years. Uh, over recent years, they've produced some pens that are their own and are great. Another thing they have done is they have consistently ripped off other brands. Um, even sort of more boutique brands like Franklin Christoph can't avoid uh, Moon Man's uh, death grip. So is this an original? Well, unfortunately, no. Not entirely. There are a couple of differences, but if we look at the Tombow Zoom, I'll put an image of the two pens sort of side by side here. I don't own one, I just am familiar with the model. Uh, you see that the two pens are remarkably similar in dimensions and scale. Uh, the nib is different, but basically, as you can see, the rest of the pen is fairly similar. So, this is the Moon Man Q1 version. Now this is the clear version, it comes with gold trim, it comes in a couple of other different finishes, and that's about it. So, let's talk about the pen. Rounded top, uh, cap, a clip ring there with the clip on it, which is very firm. Uh, cap sort of swells out, it's a very chunky pen. A little metal cap band there that says Moon Man on it. Uh, and then the body tapers down to a very lovely clear uh, end there. Now, I will say the acrylic they have used here, the plastic, is very, very nice. It's clean, it's very polished, it's beautiful. Uh, the cap is a screw cap, and it unscrews in around two turns um, and reveals a very chunky section that tapers down to the, where the cap threads are. They thread into those threads in the cap there. Uh, and then you get... a roughly number six size nib branded with Moon Man there, and this is a fine. Um, it is an eyedropper pen, so you've got threads here and a little O-ring at the top, uh, which means that you fill up this uh, body of the pen with ink, you get a good ink capacity, a few mils of ink there, not too bad at all. Um, for a pocket pen to be eyedropper only, I find a bit strange, but that's, you know, each to their own. The, at least you know that with plastic that is this thick, uh, getting cracking is going to be less likely, which is great. And that's really all there is to this pen. Uh, it's got a decent plastic feed and it writes okay. You post the pen and it becomes sort of like a decent enough length. Um, it's not the most secure posting around and I reckon you could work that loose with your hand uh, and of course unposted it's probably too small and the dimensions just a bit strange for most people to use um, I would suggest that you could use this for like ticking things off a shopping list or that kind of thing but certainly not for long writing sessions in fact I have found the pen in general to be slightly an odd dimension uh, for long writing sessions full stop Let's quickly do some size comparisons first one of course the Lamy Safari you can see sort of the scale of this pen, the girth is remarkable and the length is remarkable in its own way. And then another pocket pen is the Kaweco Sport. You see it's a little longer than that and of course much thicker. Now I have the three pens posted. You can see firstly the Kaweco and the Moon Man, this is their pref like their writing form. Um, and they are of similar kind of length. You know, if you're if you're okay with the length of the Kaweco, you'll be okay with the length of the Moon Man. Just remember the girth, particularly with that grip section, is substantial. And of course, the Lamy makes you know dwarfs both of them. Uh, and when you uncap the Lamy, it's about the same length. So let's now talk about the dimensions and uh, specs of the Moon Man. Uh, it is 114 millimeters when it is capped, 100 when it is 
uncapped, which is, you know, on the smaller side, uh, and 133 when it is posted, which makes it a usable uh, length, certainly. Now, it is the section where you hold it around here is about 20 millimeters, so it is a big section. It's big. Like, it's a, it's, you really feel the, the girth of that in your hand when you're writing. And the weight of the pen is about 30 to 35 grams, depending on the ink that you have in there. So, you know, it's not super, not super heavy, but it's definitely not a light pen. Time for a writing sample now. And as you can see through the, you know, I've got a green ink in here. Uh, but we've got the Moon Man. Q1 with a steel fine nib. Uh, and the ink is Van Diemen inks. And this is the Eucalyptus Regnans, which is a, an ink I really enjoy. Uh, I think that's a really cool sort of uh, eucalyptus y olivey green. Okay, this feedback on this nib, it's not smooth. It's not smooth smooth. It is not scratchy, but it is definitely not smooth. It's also not the wettest uh, nib, um, where the ink put, like, you do put down a decent amount of ink, but it's, it's not a, a gushy nib. It's stiff. You're not going to flex that reverse writing. Scratchy and sort of very, very fine and faint. Um, quick writing I have found okay. Um, you know, a couple of little like skippy things. It's almost like this, like a slight sweet spot where it's quite wet through the middle of the nib and then anything that sort of goes off axis of that uh, is a little bit drier. Let's talk pros and cons uh, now for the Moon Man Q1. So, um, the biggest con of this pen is that it is a ripoff of another pen. Tombow made the zoom, uh, unique pen, has been copied here by Moon Man. Straight up, simple, copy. Uh, not a clone, because there are a couple of slight differences in terms of, you know, um, some of the materials and the the blocky nature of the threads on the Tombow, but, and the nib, but more or less it is a copy of that pen. Another issue, of course, is that you are not gonna be able to get this into most pen cases. It is just too thick. Length will be fine, but it is too thick. You won't get it over a lot of the elastics and things of most pen cases. And if you're trying to put it into a pen sleeve to put in your pocket, good luck finding one because it is a chunky, chunky pen. Uh, and that girth and that chunkiness actually is another issue for me. Um, now, it's not for me the most comfortable pen to use. Um, take, putting aside the, you know, the not particularly great posting of the pen, that section is just a bit thick, and the step downs off the barrel are just a bit too in the way. And then if you go down to the narrow part of the pen, you get those threads, which aren't sharp, but you really do feel them under your fingers. So it's not a super ergonomic, super comfortable pen to use. This may be okay for someone who like has arthritis, which is, you know, in their hands, which is a big, a big issue with, for a lot of pen users. So you don't have to hold the pen particularly tight and it would fit comfortably in your hand. If that's the case, and this may be a great pen for you, but for standard writing, um, it's just not a comfortable pen to find somewhere to, to write with. Let's talk about the price. Now, you have I ordered this pen from China because that is where it's available from, you know, places like eBay. And uh, although some retailers, I'm sure, will pick it up because a number of Moon Man pens are in other retailers, both online and uh, brick and mortar. This particular one, as I said, I bought from China. Um, you can find them depending on the finish, ranging from $15 to $30. Some of the finishes are much harder to find. The clear is the easiest one to find. It's actually the one I wanted because I like to be able to see, if you're gonna have an eyedropper, I like to be able to see the ink. I think that's kind of cool. Um, but 15 to 30, depending on the finish and depending on where, sometimes a little bit more, um, that's Australian. So find out from your local, uh, eBay or retailer, how much it is for you. Now let's talk about the couple of pros of this pen. Firstly, um, I want to, you know, as I said earlier, the acrylic is really nice and the polish of it is very nice, except for the, the section there where it's sort of a bit sort of like, 
smoky or something not even smoky it's just not particularly well polished but you know through where the the ink chamber and you know these end caps and things it's oh there we go um it's a beautiful clear um acrylic uh now other pros of the ink capacity is a huge one like you get a lot of ink and that's great and uh finally it has a decent working usable nib which uh is more than a lot of pens can say for them so that's definitely going to be a pro so I hope you found this video about the Moonman Q1 interesting and useful. Um, you can make up your own minds if you're comfortable getting clones and copies of pens from Chinese manufacturers. Uh, I think there are pros and cons to that, uh, particularly for a pen like the Zoom, which is really hard to find now. Uh, but if you are trying to find um, unique pens and not copies, then this is not one that uh, you should be looking at. Uh, please like and subscribe and hit the notifications button and all those kinds of things. You can get in touch with me using any of the platforms listed below. If you've got products you think I should be looking at or if there's a way you'd like to support the channel by sponsoring a review or providing an item for review, I would love to hear from you. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you soon.